Welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where 21st century educators come to share, learn, and be inspired. We believe in the growth mindset, creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and strategic uses of education technology. Our mission is to share news and views from teachers who are crushing it in the classroom and making a difference for learners everywhere. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's jump into today's episode. Today I'm speaking with Adam Stefuk. Adam, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Are you ready to talk education? Absolutely. I'm excited to do this. I was um, when you sent the email. I was uh, interested to um, never done one of these before and thought it'd be a a good learning experience. Well, it's been a tremendous learning experience for me just to get into this, and I'm so glad that you accepted. And looking forward to our conversation. Cool. Why don't you start by telling us about your current education situation? And I know you're doing a little bit of administration right now, so tell us about that. Sure. Um, uh, living and teaching in Fort St. John at uh, the Energetic Learning Campus, or ELC, and it's part of our North Peace Secondary School, which is the only high school in town. Um, my main teaching job for the last while has been teaching a digital media course to uh, most of the grade tens at our school, and the course was uh, helped sort of co-create with some other uh, people in the district was to help support our the project-based learning that we do at our school and some of the skills that we hope to um, the kids would need for those projects. Um, I also do teach a bit of PE and uh, some different uh, electives and done photography and art over the years. And um, this year, I've had a chance to be do some administration work and uh, my vice principal at our school has had his first hip surgery in November. So he was out for six weeks. Tomorrow he's going in for his other one. So I'm going to be uh, yeah. the acting administrator for another probably five, six weeks. So um, it's been a good opportunity to uh, see what it would be like to get into administration as that's something I'm pursuing. So. Fantastic. Yeah, that must be uh, really interesting to sort of learn on the job. Tell us yeah. about a low moment that you faced in your education career and how you overcame it. Sure. Um, I guess I think back to when I was doing my practicum. Um, I mm -hmm. moved up to Fort St. John to do a, a course through SFU. It was a satellite sort of program f uh, for teaching. And, um, you okay. know, it's something that I have been out of school for quite a while. So I wouldn't say I was sort of into the... The you know, the good study habits, I wouldn't say good study habits, but just, I don't think I was, um, you know, it was, it was a lot of work for me at first. And, um, you know, my te my teachers were sort of letting me know, like, these are some things that you need to do. And they were very um, to the point and they didn't really beat around the bush. They just said, you know, this is in, in order for you to be a teacher, these are the things that you need to work on. And, and one of them was classroom management. And, mm -hmm. um, my fine, it wasn't my final uh, uh, observation from my instructor it was on Halloween. And I was definitely <laughs> concerned because it was a grade seven class. Oh, no. <laughs> and they were typically, they, they, they're just a louder group of kids. And it was, yeah. uh, I was worried, but I had the whole day planned out. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. in costume. There's lots of candy. <laughs> My teachers there observing me, and and it and it worked well, and I think it it hmm. because I put the time and effort to plan it out, thinking about some of the the feedback that I was given, like you know these are some of the things we're noticing that are maybe not going the right way with mm -hmm. the classroom management. So, I mean, I went into teaching as that's something I really wanted to do, and I had left. Uh, I had done other things before. It wasn't like right out of school going into teaching. So I knew this is what I really wanted to do. And having that focus of the end goal was to become a teacher. You just took it as a, an opportunity to learn and, mm -hmm. um, you know, not take it as uh, a low moment, but as an opportunity to just learn from your mistakes and take that feedback and, I mean, keep moving forward. That really resonates with me. And yes, I've definitely had my challenges with classroom management over the years. And I think one thing I hear there is that planning and intentionality really is half the battle, isn't it? I think uh, just coming to class prepared and knowing what you want to do and, and sort of anticipating any problems is, is really half the, half the challenge. 
What excites you about education today? This could be a big picture issue or it could be a micro level, uh, maybe something you're doing in the classroom right now. What is it that really ignites your passion for education? I think for me, it's for the, the bigger picture. And I know um, the, the curriculum change that's been sort of happened over the last couple of years for the K to nine and um, mm -hmm. I'm in a, you know, being grade 10, we've sort of been anticipating this rollout for a little bit <laughs> longer than we were planning. But um, mm -hmm. I think some of the changes are, are really positive. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I just look at some of the, really, I think there's more flexibility for the, the classroom, whether it be the teacher or the student to sort of to go in the direction or maybe go a little bit deeper into areas if if the students are into it if you're into it um, and not feel the pressure of we got all these other learning outcomes that we need to to cover this year mm -hmm. there's there's less of those so it allows you a bit of flexibility there and hopefully i mean it may come a, at first be a bit more work um, in the planning stages but i think over the long period it'll allow teachers to feel a bit more um uh, comfortable to maybe try some new things and mm. hopefully go deeper and let the kids really ex feel like they're learning stuff and not just we got to get through this we got to get through this to the next thing so you're just kind of scan you know skimming over it mm -hmm. and not really giving them a chance to really make some of those connections that that mm -hmm. hopefully they are making and um so i think that's yeah for me is one of the big things that um i think is a, is a positive change for bc's education Tell us about one education leader that we should be following on Twitter and explain why. Sure. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm a huge Twitter follower. I think I do. I'm more, I follow a few people. Um, okay. But Larry Espy, who is a former superintendent for School District 60, um, he went on to work for the Ministry of Education and he's now sort of semi retired, does a lot of um, public speaking uh, around the world on education. Um, but he was a big influence to myself and a few the the small group of teachers that helped co-create the school that I'm at. Um, okay. He he gave us that opportunity. It was something that he wanted. Um, he provided a space. He asked. He invited people to to be a part of it, and he never put any um, pressure to say you should do this or you shouldn't do that. He just said, "Here's an opportunity." do something great for kids and I'll support you along the way. And um, I think that, I mean, he's always been like that. I think he's our number one fan. He always talks about mm -hmm. us on his trips. Um, but I think he's just someone that really in his, when, if you follow his tweets or a lot of just about questioning, are we doing what's right for the kids in school? And I think mm -hmm. just always having that in mind is like, is what you're doing best for the kids or is it best for you as a teacher <laughs> and I think if you always turn it back to what's best for the kids the answers become a lot easier to say well yes or no or am I doing the right thing well if, the, if it's good for the kids then it's you're on the right track so yeah he'd be one I would definitely follow his wife is also one I would put as right beside him they're both uh, in the same sort of category and sharing information about the, the world of education so Fantastic. That name sounds really familiar to me. I will have to take a look for him yeah. later for sure. <laughs> yeah. Adam, I, I feel like we should just go back for a quick second to your school. I mean, you talked about the fact that it is rather unique. Um, it, even the name Energetic Learning Campus is, is yeah. kind of unique. So, I mean, what is it about your school or maybe the focus or, or vision of your school that sets it apart? Um. Yeah, there's some, there's a few things. So, I mean, we're we're just grade ten, and we mm -hmm. have slightly over half our grade ten population. Um, we have just over two hundred kids, and there's just under four hundred for our total population. Um, okay. So, it was. Um, I mean, our, our space is very unique. Um, it's in a a sports complex that has a speed skating oval, which is on the second floor. Oh, wow. and, it, and in between, and in, as you look down below, there's two hockey rinks in the middle of that. Oh. And then under, and then our school is at one end. So right above us is the curve of the oval. And um, so we have this curved space where you look out to the hockey rinks, lots of glass, like beautiful, modern looking building. And um, I mean, so the space sets us apart and we're, we're within mm -hmm. a public setting. So we share 
I mean, there's a walking track on the third floor. Um, we share that space with the public. And um, so that sets us apart there. Um, we try or doing project based learning as a school wide focus. Mm -hmm. And um, as another sort of part is that each the grade tens are broken up into we call it a community class um, where I see my community kids for the project based learning. I also see them for at least one or two of their core subjects, okay. which all, all teachers do. And um, so you see your community class more than any other kids and mm -hmm. you get a chance to really build a bond and they, they travel as a group to all their classes, except their electives, um, which they only get two in grade 10. So they're together as a unit. So it forms this really tight bond for a lot of the kids. And um, it's, it's unique that way where you get, you know, I get to really, really know them really well throughout the year because we're together a lot. Um, right. and, and, you know, you're going working with them on their projects. So a lot of the time they do have chances to work with other teachers, but, um, I think it's just a different environment. When you walk in, it feels like, a, an elementary school in a way, because it's just a smaller number. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have 15, 60 year old kids that are wanting to be adults and, um, <laughs> they're, they're given a lot of freedom. We have a lot of technology at our school, so they have a chance to really, to use a lot of these tools. And there's a big learning process that goes on with that. So I think over the years, they really become, um, I guess they learn more about being responsible and, and given mm -hmm. that freedom and choice. And I think that comes out in some of the, like, choosing projects that you want to do and also be given choice about how you want things in the school to, to work. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a fun place to work. So. That, well, yeah, it, it sounds like it, and it sounds incredibly progressive and just mm -hmm. like an amazing place to work and learn. So I, I think I definitely need to take a look at the, at the website Moving on and shifting gears a little bit, if you weren't teaching or working in education, what do you think would be your next choice for a career path? Right. Um, there's, a, there's a couple things. Um, I think probably a, a number one would be something to do with landscape design or installation. Um, okay. I grew up with my dad's got a beautiful landscaped yard and my sister's a landscape architect. And I've had my own house here for the last seven years and sort of developed, it's sort of gradually developed over the years as you know things are growing bigger and changing stuff around so i mean i really enjoy working with my hands and being outside and um the growing season in this town is short <laughs> for mm -hmm. sure so but uh i i think just being outside i find it very uh calming and relaxing and i think it'd be i enjoy building stuff so i think that would be probably the number one um I had a second one down there. I've, we've definitely been interested in in the craft beer sort of revolution the last few years, and yeah. thought it would have been a if I was a lot maybe a bit younger or had more time to go to school, it'd be to become a brewmaster and learn how to brew beer at a more higher level than just in your basement. But right, I haven't right. even tried. I haven't even tried that yet. So <laughs> we'll <It's>... leave. <laughs> It's amazing how that a little niche market has exploded in the last decade, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, especially in your area. Like I know when I moved away and then you look back at how many craft breweries in the lower mainland, it's like hundreds, like over it's 100. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell us about one personal habit that contributes to your success. Um, I think it's just being prepared. And I sort of start off with like, Every night, especially before I know I have to go to work the next day, make sure I prepare my coffee machine, get the coffee beans ground, turn on the machine. Um, you know, it's set on a timer, so it turns on at the right time. I think it's just being prepared. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it's for school, whether it's uh, if we're going on a road trip with the family, or if it's just meeting friends to, to go out and play golf, it's just preparing ahead so that you have everything you need, you're there on time and you're ready to go. And it just, it all, it makes me feel better. makes mm -hmm. me feel a bit more relaxed that when I get to whatever I'm doing, I know that I've thought about it and I have prepared myself as best I can. And it, it definitely makes me feel um, ready to, for those situations. I like that. I like coming, coming downstairs to the fresh coffee. That's a, a good yeah. way to start the day. <laughs> Yeah. Share one ed tech tool that you love using in your classroom or your day-to-day -day work. Sure. Uh, I think in the last 
two years, it's been Google Classroom. And this mm-hmm. year I've, I've used it exclusively um, as the only way that the kids share information with like their assignments or projects, mm-hmm. um, aside from maybe like one or two things. Um, I find it, not only it helps me organize, like when I have, I have six different classes of one subject, mm-hmm. it allows me to keep all their work in, like it's just in one place, right? I know if I'm going to mark community group a i just go into their classroom i can see their work um i find that the kids enjoy it that they're finding it easy to organize they don't have to be like oh i lost that piece of paper right Um, do you have another one it's like go to the classroom everything was there for you Um, whether it's a link to and you know something that they need to get off the internet or if it's just you need to print that off well you can do that on your own Mm -hmm. you take the responsibility it's all there it's organized um, and you mean you can have some discussions. I find at grade 10 level that that's taken a little bit to uh, have them be mature enough to do some of those, <laughs> co- <laughs> those uh, you know, commenting on questions and stuff like that. Right. There's always got to be that one guy that has to yeah. kind of ruin it for the rest of us. But I think it's a great tool and um, I, I really like all, a lot of the Google apps and that's definitely the one I would recommend to a lot of people. Well, I am heartily with you, and I am a huge <laughs> Google Classroom fan. One yeah. one small thing that I've I've been using this year and really appreciating is just giving students the option to resubmit work, which used to be a really right. painful process. But right. you know, now you just get that email that says, you know, so and so resubmitted an assignment. You can take another look at it. You can add more comments, and it's all just yeah. so you know tightly wrapped and, and neatly organized, like you said. Yeah, I think it feels like they're really making improvements every year on it. It and, does. Um, yeah. I hope that um, I would like the parents to like, I know they get updates, mm-hmm. but I would kind of like it to be a bit more interactive for the parents so they could see maybe a bit more of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens in the future, I guess. Mm-hmm. Recommend one book, one that maybe you've been reading lately or it could be one of your all-time faves and tell us why you recommend it. Sure, I guess it's one that I've, um, I chose to read for our master's program. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Leaders of Their Own Learning by Ron Berger. Um, I chose the book initially because we were given a book of his to read before our, the ELC first opened. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Ethics of Excellence. And I was like, you know what? I recognize the name. I'm sure all the books that they gave us to choose from are amazing. So chose this one. And um, I found it uh I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's a book that if you're wanting to change the culture of a school, that if all the teachers were to read this, that it gives you so much uh, amazing things to do that will help. Um, Like it says, like get kids to be leaders of their own learning. And I've taken one of the chapters and it's been my kind of focus for my inquiry this year um, for our master's program and just looking at learning targets and having kids really understand why what they're learning and why it's important and i i i know i struggled with that in the last few years where kids were always questioning why do we have to do this why do we have to do this (laughs) and now when you turn it a little bit and the shift is more on this is the focus this is the intended learning today. Mm-hmm. This is what we're working on. And they really start to understand, like, that's the whole point of today is to learn the learning target. And I think it's, I feel it is helping and them just sort of be more aware of what they're learning in school. Awesome. Tell us about one YouTube channel that you enjoy and tell us why. And this could be one that you find useful in the classroom or maybe one that you just find amusing. Sure. Um, I chose one more of a personal, amusing, enjoyable one. Uh, I'm really into disc golf the last sort of year and a bit. And, okay. Um, started watching it. They're just a Jomez Pro is their, is the company that does a lot of the filming for the professional events. And a okay. um, couple of the guys that are the main commentators I find really entertaining. And um, I'd read a, I watched a different YouTube video and there was talking about why you should watch professionals play disc golf and i was like oh okay so started watching i was like oh now i'm understanding more about the sport and and how to do the different shots and um once the snow finally melts here hopefully i'll see if it's uh, it starts to improve uh, yeah. my game by watching but i also find just a way to relax and just watch something that's kind of just you know it's not too intense with school or education it's just you can just relax and watch it 
That sounds like a lot of fun. What, uh, and moving even into, um, let's, let's say even more of a just for fun category. What are you watching on Netflix right now? Sure. Um, it's Jessica Jones. Uh, we've just started set season two, me and my wife. And okay. I, I've got her into watching all the Marvel, um, Netflix series. Oh, and, boy. um, so, <laughs> you know, it, we've watched all of them. So this is the latest one that's on and, um, sort of just kind of getting into it we're not totally bought into this one um i really enjoyed the first season i found from a a photography point of view that the way they filmed it really interesting and um so we're just trying to I don't know, have enough time to feel like we can get into watching a couple in a row to to get into this season but yeah that's one right now fantastic Adam, this has been so much fun, and I feel like so much of what you said here resonates with me personally. I wish we could talk longer. What is the best way for people to get to know you or follow you? Um, I guess through Twitter. Um, it's at Adam6, six, the number six, foot uh, six. Adam six foot six. And if, uh, yeah. and if our listeners aren't putting it together, Adam is yeah. a tall man. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Adam yeah. six foot six. So thank you so yeah. much, Adam. And you, uh, look forward to chatting more. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of teachers on fire, where teachers come to share, learn, and be inspired. Please subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at teachers on fire. I'm your host, Tim Cavey, saying goodbye for now, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast.